E-reader technology has come a long way since the Rocket Book, the very first e-reader. <laughs> so in the last yeah. like uh, decade and a half, uh, there's been a lot of innovation. We've seen e-paper yep. go from Visplex all the way to Carta right. HD, and uh, we've seen other entrants to the market like Clear Ink. Processors went from woeful to you know faster than phones. <laughs> exactly. We you know we've seen decacore e-readers yeah, that's now. that's right. Yeah. And you know the RAM has increased. Yep. Uh, the operating system fluidity has increased. We've seen an alternative to Linux, which is now Android mm -hmm. in most e-readers. There's built-in audio now. There's uh, all sorts of uh, NFC, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. There's so many different ways of connectivity. There's hey, a you lot can of... listen to audio books on e-readers yep, now. That's right. But the one thing that hasn't changed in e-readers is batteries. That's right. My name is Michael. My name is Peter. And today we're going to talk about e-readers and battery life. Something has to be done in order for this to be taken to the next level. Uh, let's give you a sense on, on what the big e-readers are using these days. The new Kindle Paperwhite 4 is using a 1500 milliamp battery. The Kindle Oasis 2 is using a 1000 milliamp battery. The new Forma, which is Kobo's flagship e-reader that costs what like 299 or so uh, 199 299 depending on the uh, size it has a 1200 milliamp battery now the e-readers with the largest batteries aren't exactly aren't exactly a household name right they come from boyu and onyx yep. uh like book mimis is running a 4700 milliamp battery and the onyx book note plus which is uh you know a, an e-reader 10.3 glass screen yeah. right 4100 milliamp battery so the largest batteries aren't coming from the big retailers. That's right. Yeah. Um, I mean, that makes sense that they do that because they're so much bigger. They have a capacitive layer. They have a Wacom layer. They have uh, sometimes uh, we've seen some e-readers with uh, 4G SIM card slots that need that data communication. And we all know when your phone's searching for a signal, it's using a lot of battery. Um, but those big guys need a lot of battery, but it is funny to see knowing that list you've said some of the the biggest companies in the e-reader world, which is basically Kobo and Amazon, they're using the smallest capacities. And the Oasis 2 is actually no slouch. It's a very expensive unit. It's about $430 and um, it's a uh, larger screen. In Canada. In Canada, sorry. Yeah, it's a larger screen. And the Forma is an eight inch screen and they're using a tiny battery as well. Yeah, it's... They do it because they can skimp out on batteries. Yeah. You know, sure. you, the, the big thing, I guess, Same with thing. these with these Amazons and Barnes and Nobles and Kobos, um, despite the fact that their flagship e-readers cost hundreds of dollars yes. and they come with all the bells and whistles, yeah. they skimp out on battery. And what this really means is that you notice that with the Forma and with the, the Oasis, uh, even the Paperwhite 4, the bezels are big. Yeah, they are. They are you know, big. Yeah, that's they're, right. They're big and clunky. Barnes and Noble Nook is is you know the most accused of all big chunky yeah, bezels. Right. The one that on looks like a bar of soap. And bottom. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's right. And it's like if these if they decided to get a bigger battery, bigger batteries don't necessarily mean bigger batteries. They they're streamlined and smaller. Yeah. So the, we mean higher capacity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so don't get that confused. A though. higher higher milliamp battery. That's right. You know, I would love to see Kobo using instead of like a twelve hundred milliamp battery to double it or even triple it. Yeah. Because that would increase battery life. Because if you think about it this way, the Oasis Two, for example, has the smallest battery out of this whole bunch but as bluetooth you can listen to audiobooks as you do it uh front lit display mm -hmm. uh you know it will you know it's waterproof yeah, yeah you know it has all these things and um the battery is just abysmal so it's like as a dedicated e-reading device you're almost shooting yourself in the foot because you're barely gonna last like 
two weeks with the front light on and listening to audiobooks. That's right. Maybe even a week at the most. And a lot of these really, really long battery tests uh, happened a long time ago when e-readers didn't do anything. They just read books. Right. So exactly. Did. Oh, my e-reader lasts for two months. Well, you're right because it doesn't have anything on it. Now we have Bluetooth. Now we have a crazy processor. We got like a lot of Wi-Fi uh, always wi on. That's right. Wi-Fi is always on. We have huge resolutions now, which means you're displaying more content every time you swipe a page. More things things have to refresh, especially on the larger stuff like the Oasis and the Forma. So if you've kept the battery the same for 10 years, capacity wise, but you've increased everything else, it's not, that's a recipe for disaster. Exactly. You're not getting those two month battery lives anymore. Yeah. I remember that time, like even like during the era of like the Sony, yep. uh, 2011s like, to 13s yeah, kind of thing. During yep. like the height of the e-reader revolution, there was all these companies that were all hitting the table at once and it's like they were all just basic e-readers yep. but the build quality on these e-readers were like phenomenal That's right. like it, you know instead of a brushed aluminum it was like real the or real they were like aluminum like, panel yeah, yeah exactly That's right so it's like they, they they were firm and they lasted a long time um E-reader batteries tend to last on general between five and seven years when yeah. you buy an e-reader to you, it, you know, they say that lifetime, it only has this many page turns available. It's basically like the LCD uh, battery uh, ends up like dying, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so I really do think that- um, That is the next thing they should really focus on. Yeah, battery right? life. Yeah, people are saying, oh, we really need to see color e-ink. Well, let's be honest, color e-ink emerged for a very short period of time on a very small select few devices that were never really retail ready. And then they just, poof, they're gone. And yeah. we haven't seen it for nine At years. At the time, the Kobo CEO told me at, at when, when E-Ink Triton 2 was out, which was sort of like the next gen color. Yeah. E he said that the colors just look washed out and we might as well just release yep. tablets at that point. And then they, you know, released like the Kobo the Vox, Vox and everything. the Arc yeah. and stuff. That's and right. then they said, you know, we're just getting out of tablets like completely right. because, you know, tablets from these e-reader companies are a race to the bottom. Like the entry level Kindle Fire the 7 fires, is like, yeah. what, like $39? They're cheap now. The, the Nook Tablet yeah. 7, uh, Eplen, you know, they're, they're, they're newer tablets tablets that yep. they release yep. it's like you know you're paying like 49 dollars right. and stuff and it's like at that point you're not really making anything on the hardware you're selling the hardware basically at cost yeah yeah you're yeah, just yeah, selling yeah. it with your right. digital ecosystem in the hopes that people are gonna like you know subscribe to prime watch prime videos right. uh with you know barnes and noble they don't really have a unique service so it's like you know use google play and use, use it like you know yeah um, uh, and uh, I found that a uh, little bit off topic, well on topic, off topic, I've found that with uh, speaking of the Fire tablets, a lot of the time Amazon just uses a lot of the old stock of things and they re-release it. For example, the 7th gen and the 8th gen of the Fire 8, the pretty much exact same thing with a different SD card to give you more storage. They were identical. They were yeah. the same shell, the same screen, the same housing, the same ports, and they released it. And the very bottom, you see 2017 and 2018 written on the bottom. That's the only difference. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so, continue. You know, I, I, I think that, you know, kind of like our premise is that there's been so many advancements in the e-reader industry yes. the battery is like something that a lot of people just don't think about and i think it's high time that these e-reader manufacturers from like the big three at least in north america yeah. start considering using a higher capacity batteries because with all the bells and whistles with all the new tech with all the emerging tech with audiobooks and all the all the this jazz I, I think that we got to get back to e-readers lasting you two or three months of I think constant so. use instead of just weeks at a time. I think so, yeah. And if you look at something really interesting, when you read a book, you're staring at a page that isn't drawing any power and you flip the page, you know what I mean? But now there's so many conveniences. There's fast travel, there's quick page turn, there's faster refreshes, and all that is putting more draw on the e-reader. For example, the manga model, the, the, the line of uh, Kobo devices, they all have rapid page turn which means you said oh you know what was that guy say and you hold the page and you go through 60 page refreshes at a rapid pace to get back to the page you want to reference well you've just drawn so much power from that e-reader more than you notice and then you wonder there's why. a lot of things loaded yeah, in resident memory that's right. now that weren't that's before. exactly it before you'd just be like staring at a page for three minutes and then you change the page but you know so many things are getting in the way now with so many like you know oh we're gonna reduce uh we're gonna 
that we're gonna up the refresh rate and it refreshes really quick. Well, that's where do you think all the power is coming from? It's yeah. coming from the battery. Yeah, and you got to think about it that you and know, glow light technology. Yeah, sorry, but glow light technology. <laughs> Let's put 16 LEDs. Of yeah, all, <laughs> there's no windmill attached to my e-reader. It's coming from the battery. <laughs> I think one of the reasons why some of those, you know, the Onyx books and the boy use yeah. of the world, they're using way higher capacity way batteries higher. is because they're running Android and they that know that right. people are going to have uh, the keyboard always loaded. And yeah, the memory. tons of stuff uh, in the background. You know, you know, yeah, yeah background, background processes, processes is huge. For sure. And, huge. It, you know, Linux e-readers have background processes. Yeah, like, you just but can't with, touch them. But with Android, you can actually see them. That's right, yeah. You your know. weather app, your, your, your clock, your calculator you didn't close is still calculating things. There's so many things going on on Android. Yeah, and that's why these e-readers, despite the fact that they too only last, like, you know, lucky at two weeks of constant use yeah. and when, we, when we're you know when we're talking about constant use we're going be beyond like the marketing pr machine like amazon will say yeah the kindle lasts four weeks or kobo will be like you could read up to like three you know two months yeah. but they you know in small parentheses it's like with an hour a day of reading right, and, right. you know with the wi-fi off with wi the glow off, light off, off you know they, yeah, they have right. these little disclaimers so because we've been covering e-readers for over a decade yeah. now, we know to look beyond the PR hype. Right. We, you know, have run tests where we just like have a bird, like shh, shh, yeah. like those like little the, birds the with ones, the thing yeah, at the yeah, like yeah. the liquid, liquid at the liquid, bottom. That's right, yeah. yeah, we we've actually done these <clears throat> internal tests. We haven't like done a video on it, but we we, but we might. Yeah, but given that if there's any interest Stress in it, yeah. due due to this video, yeah. you know, if you want to see, like a rapid sort of you know progression you know how people film like uh the moon waning over a period of a night oh, yeah, where they shoot, time -lapse. Just shoot yeah, yeah, yeah the time lapse we can do like sort of a time lapse video of, so you want to set up a camera on an e-reader for a month and do a huge time lapse yeah yeah no we we, we could do something if it'll be a way less than a month i, I oh, would yeah. say if we were to just constantly have two birds page forward yeah. page back right. uh, on, on two different e-readers or maybe just one different e-reader right there might be interest in that mm -hmm. but then yeah, again something it's like you know one camera and we shoot videos yeah. every day so right. i don't know how feasible that would be but we could maybe do it with like an old cell phone or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we could set up some sort of jerry rig thing and do some sort of time lapse thing going on. That would be actually. If you cool. guys would like to yeah, see that, drop a comment below. Let us know what you think about batteries. Are higher capacitive batteries larger or smaller? Do you think that that will play a role in maybe you know if Amazon offered a three thousand milliamp battery that would in a be new cool. Kindle, yeah. Would you buy that over something that's hot? You know has more bells and whistles, but a smaller battery. Drop a comment below. Let us know what you think about the discussion points today for goodyreader.com. My name is Peter. And my name's Peter. Everybody take care.